2x10s were cut up into two, essentially 2x4s, two and then we machined the centers of those out with the, the 15 to 30 slot cutter. You know, we didn't want to have the cables like circling up the pole and then plugging in, so that's where I decided to buy the slot cutter. Um, and again, being able to uh, machine two sides on the 2x4s and put those together allowed us to create that channel. Um, so that challenge was easily overcome. We also use that same tool for cutting a, a slot on the top um, to receive this piece. Um, simultaneously, these pieces were being uh, milled up. These are uh, one inch. And then here and here, we had some nails and that's where the wires were run. So these sections here and here were done with the spiral tool using a template with a bearing on the bottom. And it allowed us to you know, quickly machine these curves repeatedly and accurately, but also get an extremely nice um, surface finish on this. We basically decided to do it this way, finishing with the end grain that way. And then we'd flip the piece and then come in and do it again. Because it's quite dangerous if you're trying to start like this because the worst thing is getting your piece pulled into the machine. So being very conscious of like grain direction and end grain is going to be important when setting up your template. We've got an 80 mil uh, essentially cutting height here with an 80 mil cutting diameter, which is nice. Uh, and the way we have it set up, we've got a bearing on the bottom here. So we're going to have a template on the bottom side and then the piece we want to cut on the top side. I mean, the other way something like this could be done would be with, you know, basic router tooling. Um, but the thing about router tooling is you have such a small piece of metal in which you're, you're putting pressure against. So I find when working with a tool like this, there's like way more confidence and way more stability to be able to run your piece through your cut. And so when I switched over from using router tooling to the shaper tooling, I just, it's, that's much more confident, that's much more safe, and the cut quality is, is much better. So you can take off way more material in a single pass without having to you know, do repeated passes of it using uh, old router tooling. Uh, once those are finished, we uh, took the spiral tool, tilted it on a 45, and then we created, we plunged cutted the piece in and ran it along the length and then pulled that out. And that gave us a nice clean cut. They call it a lamb's tongue is the, the finish. Uh, and that was really great because we had yeah, a beautifully nice finished cut. We didn't have to do anything after. And then we got this piece uh, fitted in, uh, drilled a hole out and put a dowel in to secure it. Uh, and then that was pretty much it. So what's great about the spiral tool is basically right off the tool you have a, like a finish ready cut. So we pre-finish the beams completely with a, with a white clear coat, a white tinted clear coat, and then we machine those after. And that way we were able to get a nice clean definition between the white and the clear wood machine face versus doing it the other way where we do the machining first and then try to sand off that. So being able to do that and have a finish ready product right off the end was really awesome. Really, for us, it was an opportunity to show off our creative capacity and production capacity and what we could do. And uh, the project was very, very well received. The organizers really liked it. The people really enjoyed seeing it, but when it really set off is when the sun went down and the lights started to appear. And it was like these power lines were cruising over this 300-person long table dinner that stretched about 100 meters. So the overall aesthetic and environment that these posts brought to the dinner was, was really incredible and, and definitely got a lot of positive feedback from the community. 